All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new. Thank you for taking time out of your day to check the video out. We have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and cover here today. So do me a favor before we dive into the topics. If you end up enjoying the video or finding it informative, be sure to leave it a like. And if you are new here to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button as well. We're starting here with a small update regarding the long rumored state of play that is apparently happening at the end of this month. Originally, we heard from Jeff Grubb that Sony was planning a state of play, not a showcase, for some time during the end of September, and he has provided a small update simply saying that it is almost certainly happening on the 24th. So the 24th would be on Tuesday, so because of that, Sony could announce it at any time. Who knows, by the time I upload this video, it may have already been announced, but it could be announced maybe on Monday, the day before. Sony has done that in the past but for those wondering if the state of play is still happening jeff grubb is doubling down and saying yes it's happening seemingly on the 24th but when it comes to what we can expect at the state of play there is a game that was recently rated that seems like it is going to appear at the state of play i think it's something that's going to very much underwhelm a lot of playstation players but still i'm here to keep you guys informed this is being reported by PlayStation Lifestyle. They say it looks like Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered's official announcement and release date aren't too far away. The rumored remaster was first outed in 2022 when some outlets got a hold of an internal Sony document, but we haven't really heard anything since, until today that is. The unannounced title has just been rated by the ESRB. The ESRB rating mentions PS5 and PC as the remaster's platforms. It looks like Sony will be opting for a simultaneous release, just like Until Dawn Remake. Previous reports claim that Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered will feature an improved lighting system, a texture overhaul, improved animations, and new character models. According to MP First, who first leaked the remaster, the game will also feature new accessibility options, different graphics modes, and VRR support. Now, as of right now, there's no mention of PS5 Pro support, however, Considering this state of play will likely have a very heavy emphasis on PS5 Pro enhanced games, I would say it's extremely likely that this remaster will be enhanced for the PS5 Pro, and I imagine we'll actually hear about a Horizon Forbidden West PS5 Pro enhancement as well. And so obviously, this is a remaster that it's very clear not many people have been asking for, maybe no one is really asking for, but... I think it really comes down to how Sony handles it, right? If they come out, they don't make a big deal about it, and it's like, look, it's pretty much just been updated to kind of match Horizon Forbidden West's graphical fidelity. There's a $10 upgrade path for anybody who cares about it. Sure, that's fine. You know, I don't think that's that big of a deal. We just saw Sony do something like that with The Last of Us Part Two Remastered, and it really wasn't a big deal. But it is very understandable how people are starting to feel a little bit bothered by how many remakes and remasters we're getting um, and I wouldn't say that that's even the problem but maybe the fact that there are many other games like older games and kind of classic IPs that fans would love to see Sony kind of return to and remaster like I think talking about Guerrilla Games fans would love to see a remaster of Killzone like one through three and get like a trilogy package even at full price with some multiplayer because it feels like you know, that's just a series that Sony has completely abandoned and it would be kind of a, a breath of fresh air. But then again, Horizon has sold incredibly well and it outsold all the Killzone games combined. So you look at that data and you're like, okay, I, I guess it kind of makes sense why they're going to go down this, this path here. But um, obviously the hope is we're not just looking at remasters or remakes at this upcoming state of play. But moving on to... Uh, some more positive news, I would say, in regards to the PS5 Pro. I have a report here from Push Square, and it says, Here come the early tech evaluations then. According to the expert, experts excuse me, at Digital Foundry, based on several minutes of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth footage running on the PS5 Pro, the upgrade is a, quote, night and day difference, end quote. We've already heard murmurs about the improvements to this game in particular, which will run at 60 frames per second, on the PS5 Pro with significantly improved image quality, but here's the evidence to support it. The Square Enix title is a very interesting example 
because many people complained about its visuals in performance mode. The publisher did attempt to improve this with a subsequent patch, but it's always looked soft when running at 60 FPS. As system architect Mark Cerny promised, the PS5 Pro solves these issues, offering a smooth frame rate with image quality on par with, and in some instances, even better than the base PS5's 30 FPS graphics mode. Once again, reading through the increasingly complex analysis, it seems like Sony's AI-based PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution is doing a lot of the heavy lifting here, taking a comparable internal resolution to the original and upscaling it effortlessly with very few compromises in image quality. Digital Foundry's report does note that the technology struggles a little bit with areas of shadow depth of field, but overall we can see a remarkable increase in clarity and image quality. The report also notes that ghosting is no longer an issue on PS5 Pro, and even distant foliage appears more solid and dense on the upgraded appliance. But pop-in does remain an issue in the open world. Particle effects also appear cleaner and clearer in motion, where they're muddy on the standard PS5 console. All of this results in a dramatic difference, and it's probably worth emphasizing that the patch is unlikely to be finalized just yet. So... Yeah, this is something that I think kind of did a much better job at getting people feeling somewhat excited or at least better about the PS5 Pro than the actual presentation that Sony put out there. Because if you watch this Digital Foundry analysis, one of the most impressive things, in my opinion, is not even just how much clearer and better the game looks running at 60 FPS, but really when they compared the PS5 Pro version running up against the PS5 graphics mode version running at 30 FPS and how they point out the image clarity and the image detail is actually higher on the Pro running at 60 FPS than the base model PS5 graphics mode blocked at 30 FPS. That to me is what really kind of sold me on, wow, okay, the PS5 Pro is no joke here in what it's able to do. And if you compare it to the performance mode, I mean, it kind of is a night and day difference. The performance mode for this game just really didn't look very good. Now, I think it's safe to say that not every game is going to have results that are like this jarring, where it's like, whoa. But at the same time, one of the things that Digital Foundry notes here is that this is seemingly PSSR in like full effect here. And we're fine. We're like getting our first look at this is what this technology can do this AI upscaler this is what it can do for games and considering it's the early days like this is one of the first things we're seeing it sounds very promising and I really do think that this tech that I I would say it's safe to assume that Mark Cerny and the engineers are going to continue to develop and improve upon and as long as it's easy for developers to implement this could be like absolutely huge for many games going forward and uh yeah if if this is what we're seeing now, I'm honestly very excited to see how much further we can go with this. But yeah, I will say this has gotten me much more excited about the PS5 Pro. Again, I know not everybody's on board with it. I think that's totally fine. But for those who are, these are some very promising results. But moving on to the next topic, continuing to talk about Final Fantasy, we have some not so good news here. This is being reported by Push Square. And it says Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will be competing for the top accolades when it comes to Game of the Year this Christmas, but Square Enix is not happy with how it has performed. In fact, the Japanese publisher's two big PS5 exclusives, including Final Fantasy XVI, have failed to, quote, meet expectations, end quote. That's according to a financial results briefing held in May, which was released publicly today. The full statement from boss Takashi Kiru is as follows, quote, In the HD games sub-segment, we released multiple new titles, including major titles such as Final Fantasy XVI and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but profits unfortunately did not meet our expectations, end quote. Other titles like Foam Stars, which has since gone free to play, have failed to perform at the level anticipated as well. While the company hasn't shared concrete sales data, it's worth noting that Final Fantasy 16 released on PC this week. In terms of concurrent players on Steam, it's peaked at just under 20,000. So it seems to be off to a sturdy start. Square Enix has also admitted it'll be aggressively pursuing multi-platform 
moving forward. So, yeah, this is something that is, I would say, maybe not all that surprising. Uh, there were maybe some people thinking Final Fantasy 16 could have gotten better sales over time. It got like 3 million in the first week, which seemed a little bit soft according to Square Enix expectations. But it seems like even over time, it just wasn't able to do what Square Enix had expected. And I think we all kind of knew that Rebirth didn't do that well either. And so, you know, it makes sense that Square, after seeing these results, is going to go multi-platform because the reality is, based on how much money they're pouring into the development of these titles, if they're failing to meet expectations to break even or make any type of profit, then it only makes sense that, yeah, you're going to have to try to release it on more platforms in the hopes that you overall get more sales and that can kind of get you where you need to be if the PS5 alone can't do it. But yeah, I think it'll be very interesting to see how Final Fantasy ends up selling once it goes more multi-platform. Um, I mean, I, th I think it's understandable that the assumption is, well, surely it will do better. But the question is, how much better? Will it be able to get up to that expectation level that Square Enix expects it to? Or will it still end up falling short? I guess we will find out. But guys, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. If you did, be sure to leave the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, hit the bell notification icon, and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.